The Revenant tells the story of a fur trapper that is mauled by a bear and then robbed and left to die by his companions, but he survives and proceeds to trek 200 miles to exact his revenge. Most people think that The Revenant was mostly shot in camera, and this is not surprising considering that's how the movie was promoted. But the truth is that The Revenant had a huge amount of VFX work done, the irony of this being that the VFX were done so well that they could easily claim they didn't exist. Industrial Light and Magic and Gradient Effects were lead VFX houses on this film, with MPC and Cinecide stitching shots together and providing the battle scenes at the start and the end of the film. Secret Lab is Gradient Effects' sister company and focuses mainly on feature films and research and development, and they were responsible for over 30 minutes of footage. Their work involved the creation of dozens of CG arrows, various CG snow effects including blizzard simulations, the addition of trees and snow to the original plates, as well as object removal and cleanup work. But perhaps their most impressive work on this film is the least talked about. For a man who had been abandoned in the wilderness with no food, DiCaprio's body just wasn't thin enough. Secret Lab overcame this by using a proprietary tool they had been developing and using for over eight years. This tool is called Shapeshifter and was originally used in the films Cloud Atlas and The Host for changing eye colours by tracking the eye and adding a 3D iris. But it has since evolved. The tool is now capable of analysing the motion of a face or body part, how it moves and stretches, to create metadata in 3D, basically creating a motion capture using the actual source camera footage. Artists can then access this in Maya, adjust and reshape one frame, and it recalculates back using the footage and reshapes the body part. Any change made to that frame will be inherent throughout the whole shot. MPC was tasked with the opening battle sequence. For this sequence, the director wanted one continuously running photo reel, real time sequence. This meant that the majority of plates had to be shot under similar lighting conditions to avoid continuity issues. They achieved this by only shooting the plates during the magic hour, and so the shot had to be filmed over a period of two weeks, very carefully choreographed and shot with multiple cameras. MPC then had to take all these shots and seamlessly stitch them together. Using a combination of techniques such as retiming parts of a plate, rebuilding sections of the image with other takes of the action and with a 2.5D projection onto a model, MPC managed to reduce the initial over 100 shots down to 39 extended shots. Industrial Light and Magic did a huge amount of CG animals elk, the buffalo, the wolves, and the birds were all CG. The horse was a combination of real, mechanical, and CGI. And the bear and the cubs were all 100% CG too. In order to ensure the lighting of the CG animals was correct, animals were brought in on set and used as a lighting reference. And when shooting the scenes where the CG animals would appear, they shot lots of environment spheres, plates of skies, in addition to standard grey and mirror balls. The bear fight scene was perhaps the most complicated scene in the film. Industrial Light and Magic were working on this scene with the idea that it had to be continuous, up close, and messy. Using a video they found online of a bear attacking a drunken man in a German zoo for reference, they began to work with a stunt team on how to move Leo around and where to grab and pull him to simulate where the bear would bite him. To create the bear, ILM took photos of Kula and Grinder, two grizzly bears at Vancouver's Grouse Mountain Wildlife Sanctuary, to use as reference. Maya was used for animation, Pixar's Renderman was used for rendering, and Zeno's Pipeline was used for simulation. And for the bear, multiple levels of simulation were needed. Skeleton, muscles, fascia, skin and fur. And 
the fur was the biggest challenge. How wet would it be? How matted? How much debris caught in it? How much blood? And how the light would react to it? All with subtle details and nuances that had to be added. Cinesite delivered 138 shots, which was approximately 38 minutes of film. Cinesite's work is spread all over the film and mainly consisted of creating fluid transitions between shots and seamlessly stitching shots together to eliminate cuts. They also did set extensions, character animation, digital map paintings, fluid and particle effects simulations, CG trees and cleaning and compositing. One continuous sequence they did do was the end battle which was about 50 shots and was split between their Montreal team and their London team. The Montreal team concentrated on set extensions, sky replacements, complex stitches and snow additions which were necessary throughout the scene because it had been filmed on various days with different light and weather conditions. The London team had to take the multiple takes from the scene and stitch them together so the audience could follow the fighters seamlessly in addition to adding snow animation and the CG knife and the Axe. The London team created three different variants of the knife, one rusty, one clean and one snowy and blood covered and transitioned between them as the fight progressed. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this video, don't forget the links to the music used in this video are in the video description and be sure to let us know as always in the comments which movie VFX you'd like to see behind next.